birth date of Jesus. I've been looking forward to when our Lord returns to take us off the planet. I'm really sick and tired of being on the planet and take us home and be judged at the judgment seat of Christ, receive our rewards and our resurrection body and start my new life away from sin and in a brand new resurrection body. There are some questions as to when that might happen. And I ran across this study that I posted. The birth date of Jesus. Now Luke says, Cyrenius, Quirinius, was governor of Syria when Jesus was born. There's some critics of the Bible that would say that was wrong. Was he wrong? Well, critics of the Bible do say that Luke wrote a contradiction in the Bible when he said that Quirinius was governor of Syria when Jesus was born. And their stance is usually as follows. Matthew and Luke attempt to give the time of Jesus' birth approximately. But between these two attempts, there is a discrepancy of at least 10 years. For Herod died 4 B.C., this is their stance, while Cyrenius did not become governor of Syria until 7 A.D. A reconciliation of these statements is impossible. Matthew clearly states that Jesus was born during the reign of Herod. Luke states that Augustus Caesar issued a decree that the world should be taxed and that this taxing, taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. They further add that Jesus was born at the time of this taxing. It's a book written, Norman Geisler and Thomas Howe, has lots of uh, explanations of these critical points like this particular one. It's entitled, When Critics Ask. And he goes ahead and states, Norman Geisler, Luke has not made an error. There are reasonable solutions to this difficulty. First, Quintilius Verus was governor of Syria from about 7 B.C. to about 4 B.C. Verus was not a trustworthy leader. The fact that was disastrously de demonstrated in A.D. 9 when he lost three legions of soldiers in the Titoburger forest in Germany. To the contrary, Quirinius was a notable military leader who was responsible for squelching the rebellion of the Homoadenesians in Asia Minor. When it came time to begin the census in about 8 or 7 BC, Augustus entrusted Quirinius with the delicate problem in the volatile area of Palestine, effectively superseding the authority and governorship of Verus by appointing Quirinius to a place of special authority in this matter. It has also been proposed that Quirinius was governor of Syria on two separate occasions, once while prosecuting the military action against the Homodonesians between 12 and 2 BC, and later beginning about AD 6. A Latin inscription was discovered in 1764, and it has been interpreted to refer to Quirinius as having served as governor of Syria on two occasions. It is possible that Luke 2.2 reads, This census took place before Quirinius was governing Syria. In this case, the, the Greek word translated first is translated as a comparative before. Because of the awake, awkward construction of the sentence, this is not an unlikely reading. Regardless of which solution is accepted, it is not necessary to conclude that Luke had made an error in recording the historical events surrounding the birth of Jesus. Luke has proven himself to be a reliable historian even in the details. Sir William Ramsey has shown that in making references to 32 countries, 54 cities, and nine islands, 
he made no mistakes. In any case, on this website www.christiananswers.net, his full name was Publius Sulpicius Quirinius. A recent historical investigation has proved that Quirinius was governor of Cilicia, Cilicia, which was annexed to Syria at the time of our Lord's birth. Cilicia, which he ruled, being a province of Syria, he is called the governor, which he was de jure of Syria. Some ten years afterwards, he was appointed governor of Syria for the second time. During his tenure of office at the time of our Lord's birth, Luke 2.2, 2, a taxing enrollment or a registration of the people was first made. And it was made for the first time under his government. We have that under Luke 2.2. 2. The RV says the word enrollment. When Cyrenius was governor of Syria, it is simply a census of the people, or an enrollment of them with a view to their taxation. The decree for the enrollment was the occasion of Joseph and Mary's going up to Bethlehem. It has been argued by some that Cyrenius was governor of Cilicia and Syria both at the time of our Lord's birth and some time afterwards. This decree for the taxing referred to the whole Roman world and not to Judea alone. Point two. Skeptics think that the account of Matthew contradicts Luke, Ray, when Joseph and Mary left Bethlehem with Jesus. Skeptics say it is generally assumed that Jesus was born in the last year of Herod's reign. How long before the close of Herod's reign was he born? Matthew, at least two years. Matthew says that when the wise men visited Herod, he diligently inquired of them the time when the star which announced the birth of Jesus first appeared. When he determined to, de to destroy Jesus and massacred the infants of Bethlehem and the surrounding country, he slew those from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men, clearly indicating that Jesus was nearly or quite two years old at this time. In attempting to reconcile Matthew's visit of the wise men to Jesus at Bethlehem with the narrative of Luke, which makes his stay less than three, six weeks. It has been assumed that this visit occurred immediately after his birth, whereas, according to Matthew, it did not occur until about two years after his birth. Well, we have an answer from the Bible on this. The Luke account does not mention the visit of the Magi, the murder of the innocents, nor the flight to Egypt, for it did not serve the purpose of the author. Otherwise, he would have included it. The context is not one of a strict chronological order of events, leaving no single event out. Luke jumps from Jesus' presentation in the temple to their return to Nazareth, perhaps several years later, not necessarily six years later. The events of Matthew chapter 2 do not appear in Luke. An event of Jesus' presentation in Luke 2, 21 to 38 do not appear in Matthew either. In view of the geographical fact that Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and Nazareth are relatively reachable distances from one another, even a foot, and since faithful Jews often came to Jerusalem, which is next to Bethlehem, to worship, celebrate festivals, and sacrifice at the temple, it is therefore reasonable to consider that Joseph, Mary, and Jesus might have moved back and forth in the two-plus year period in question at least one or more times. In any case, an argument from silence is not a strong one. In other words, that Luke is held accountable for what Matthew includes or vice versa. The order of events is 1. The journey of Joseph and Mary from Nazareth to Bethlehem. 2. Birth of the child. 3. Presentation in the temple. 4. Visit of the Magi. 5. Flight of the family to Egypt. 6. Return and settlement at Nazareth.
Eusebius, Epiphanius, and Patricius maintain that after the presentation in the temple, Joseph and Mary returned to Nazareth, Luke 2.39, and having arranged their affairs there, came back to Bethlehem, which must have possessed very strong attractions for them, with a view to make the latter place their home. Wordsworth thinks they came to Bethlehem the second time on the occasion of one of the great annual feasts. At this time, they received the Magi, not in a stable, but in a house, Matthew 2.11. And from this city, they fled into Egypt. In another reference here, Quito, none of this is impossible and very plausible considering the reachable distances between the cities and the habit of Jews to visit Jerusalem regularly. So, to assume that several years did not go by between our Lord's presentation in the temple when he was a baby and when Joseph and Mary moved back to Nazareth, or to assume that Joseph and Mary never came back to, to Bethlehem after they left is an argument from silence which refutes itself. One might ask the skeptics, where is there a demand that there is a strict chronological sequence of events with nothing left out? Matthew left out a number of things that appear in Luke's account. Where does it say that this was the last time Joseph, Mary, and Jesus were in Bethlehem? Where is it ruled out that they indeed did return to Bethlehem or remained at residence there when the Magi came to visit Jesus? Answer, nowhere. Note verse 241 of Luke. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. So they did return to Jerusalem and the Bethlehem area. Three, skeptics maintain that there was no census that Luke's mention of it and Quirinius being governor is a fabrication. On an objection about Luke, Quirinius and Herod's by the name of Robin Lane Fox, critic, critic of this, the difficulty begins on one small point but spreads from it like dry rot to bring larger construction to the ground. Well, my answer in blue font is why do I all of a sudden smell polemic? Would you consider dry rot a value-laden term? Quirinius the governor of Syria, whom Luke, Luke's gospel mentions, is known from a careful history of affairs in Judea, which was compiled by Josephus, an educated Jew, writing in Greek at Rome between C75 and C80. Josephus had his own prejudices and areas of interest, but he worked with a framework of hard facts which were freely available for checking and which he had collected responsibly. According to Josephus, Quirinius was governor of Assyria with authority over Judea in 86 when the province was brought under direct Roman control. The year was a critical moment in Jewish history as important to its province as the 1972 to Northern Ireland, the start of direct rule. On such a fact, at such a moment, Josephus and his sources cannot be brushed aside. There is, however, an awkward problem. Luke's Gospel links Jesus' birth with Quirinius. Now, I may have a problem with the word with, but keep going. Let's see what he says. And with King Herod, but in 86, Herod had long disappeared. He had died soon after an eclipse of the moon, which is dated by astronomers to 12 to 13 March 4 BC, although a minority of scholars have, have argued for 5 BC instead. So far, so good, no big deal. The Gospel, therefore, assumes that Quirinius and King Herod were contemporaries, where they were separated by 10 years or more. In my blue front, I say, I assume you mean contemporaries in office. They were certainly contemporaries in life. Quirinius, at the time of King Herod's death, was doing military expeditions in the eastern provinces of the Roman Empire, according to Tacitus, with some evidence 
indicating that either 